Houthi rebels in Yemen, backed by Iran, have declared that they fired drones and missiles at Israel, marking a widening of the Israel-Hamas conflict. The Houthi military spokesperson confirmed their third attack on Israel since the start of the Gaza conflict, indicating their involvement in previous incidents. The Houthis, part of the axis of resistance, oppose Israel and the United States escalating attacks across the region since October 7. The Houthis blamed Israel for Middle East instability and vowed more attacks until Israeli aggression stops. The conflict has raised concerns about regional spillover and risks for Saudi Arabia. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, called on Muslim states to halt oil and food exports to Israel, demanding an immediate end to its bombardment of the Gaza Strip. Khamenei denounced the United States, France, and Britain as complicit in Israel's recent crimes against Palestinians, and urged the Islamic world to stand against the oppression. Iran has long supported the Palestinian cause, portraying itself as a leader in the Muslim world. Khamenei's comments come as Israel intensifies its military operations in Gaza, leading to heightened tensions in the region. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg expressed concerns about escalating tensions in the Middle East amid the Israel-Hamas conflict during a speech at the 75th Nordic Council session. Stoltenberg emphasized the importance of Israel's response aligning with international law, protecting civilian lives, and ensuring humanitarian aid reaches Gaza. He also urged containment of the conflict, stating that it should not escalate into a major regional conflict involving Iran, Hezbollah, and other groups. Stoltenberg emphasized NATO's continued support for Ukraine in its conflict with Russia and called for increased support, including more weapons, to address the ongoing challenges. Craig Mockaber, a high-ranking United Nations official, retired after advocating for a one-state solution to the Israel-Palestinian conflict. In his letter, Mockaber called for a single, democratic, secular state in all of historic Palestine with equal rights for Christians, Muslims, and Jews, leading to criticism and accusations of anti-Israel bias. The letter also targeted the US and Western allies, accusing them of complicity in the conflict. Critics argue that Mockaber's retirement indicates a deal to save his pension, raising concerns among US taxpayers. The UN Office of Human Rights clarified that Mockaber's views are personal and not reflective of the office's official stance. Amnesty International reported that Israeli forces hit a southern Lebanese border village with shells containing white phosphorus, causing injuries to civilians. The organization verified three other instances of Israel using white phosphorus on Lebanese border areas in the past month but did not document harm to civilians in those cases. White phosphorus is considered illegal under international law when used in populated areas, as it can cause severe burns and pose health risks. Amnesty labeled the incident as an indiscriminate attack and called for an investigation as a potential war crime. Israel maintains that it uses white phosphorus only as a smokescreen, not to target civilians. Israel launched an airstrike on the Jabalia refugee camp in Gaza, targeting Hamas operatives and infrastructure. The Israel Defense Forces, IDF, claimed responsibility, stating it was part of a wide-scale strike against Hamas in the area. The IDF aimed to damage Hamas command and control and target a specific Hamas commander, Ibrahim Biari, allegedly responsible for the October 7 attacks. The strike caused extensive damage to the refugee camp, leading to civilian casualties. The IDF urged residents to move south for their safety. The ongoing Israeli airstrikes and ground offensive have resulted in thousands of Palestinian casualties in the densely populated Gaza Strip. Hamas commander Ibrahim Biari was killed in an Israeli strike on a refugee camp in Jabalia, northern Gaza Strip. The Israel Defense Forces, IDF, spokesperson, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, stated that the operation resulted in the deaths of many terrorists, both inside and under the building, with extensive underground infrastructure collapsing. Biari was reportedly responsible for the October 7 attack on Israel and other related activities. The IDF has been conducting a series of operations targeting key Hamas figures and infrastructure in response to recent attacks. Bolivia has severed diplomatic ties with Israel in protest of its military offensive in Gaza. Colombia and Chile have recalled their ambassadors to Israel for consultations. The South American nations condemned Israel's attacks on Gaza and called for a ceasefire, accusing Israel of violating international law. Bolivia's Deputy Foreign Minister Freddy Mamani stated that the decision to break diplomatic relations with Israel was due to the aggressive and disproportionate Israeli military offensive in Gaza.
The move comes amid a wave of international criticism of Israel's actions in response to an October 7 attack by Palestinian Hamas militants in southern Israel. Chinese online maps, including those on platforms like Baidu and Alibaba, have been found to omit references to Israel. Users have noticed that while Israel's neighbors like Jordan, Lebanon, and Egypt are accurately depicted on the maps, Israel itself is missing. This absence has sparked discussions among Chinese internet users, especially after the conflict involving Hamas on October 7. China has a history of emphasizing map boundaries and has redrawn maps to assert territorial claims in disputes with countries like India and Malaysia. The reason for Israel's exclusion from Chinese maps remains unclear, but China's close relationship with Iran, a major supporter of groups like Hamas, could be a contributing factor. The U.S. has previously acknowledged China's sensitivity to maps, as seen in incidents related to Taiwan. A recent poll by the Levada Center in Moscow reveals that only 34% of Russians would support President Vladimir Putin if he decided to end the invasion of Ukraine and return the occupied territories. However, 70% would support ending the invasion without returning territories. The poll also indicates that the level of support for the actions of the Russian armed forces in Ukraine remains high, with 76% expressing support. While 56% support the start of peace talks, this number rises to 69% among those aged 18 to 24. The survey was conducted between October 19 and October 25, 2023, with 1,607 adults in Russia. Over the weekend, a mob chanting anti-Semitic slurs targeted Jewish passengers arriving from Tel Aviv at an airport in Dagestan, Russia. In response, Russian President Vladimir Putin claimed, without evidence, that the West, particularly Ukraine, was responsible for the unrest. He accused the US of being behind the war between Israel and Hamas, alleging attempts to destabilize Russian society. This fits into Putin's broader narrative of portraying the West as an enemy and undermining Western attempts to isolate Russia for its actions in Ukraine. The Russian disinformation campaign seeks to link Western-supplied Ukrainian weapons to the Hamas attacks that triggered the Israel-Hamas conflict. Putin's strategy aims to deepen divisions between the US, Europe, and the Middle East, hindering global cooperation and sanctions enforcement on Russia. The US, by supporting Israel's campaign in Gaza, faces accusations of hypocrisy and weakened efforts to rally global opposition to Russia's actions in Ukraine. Putin exploits this rift to bolster alliances, gain favor with Gulf states, and position Russia as a counterbalance to Western influence in the Middle East. South Korea's National Intelligence Service, NIS, believes that North Korea sent over a million artillery shells to Russia since August, potentially aiding Russia's war in Ukraine. The transfer, suspected to be part of an arms arrangement, involves North Korea supplying munitions to Russia in exchange for advanced technologies. Both North Korea and Russia deny the claims. The NIS suggests that North Korea operated munitions factories at full capacity to meet Russian demands, potentially dispatching weapons experts to advise Russia. There are concerns that North Korea might gain sensitive Russian technologies, but the NIS believes assistance may be limited to conventional capabilities. The cooperation might also extend to North Korea's satellite program, with potential Russian assistance for a military reconnaissance satellite launch. The US, South Korea, and Japan issued a joint statement condemning North Korea's alleged supply of munitions to Russia, accusing it of increasing the human toll in the conflict. North Korea is reportedly in the final stages of preparing for the launch of a spy satellite, with a high likelihood of success in its third attempt. South Korea's National Intelligence Service, NIS, revealed the information during a closed-door briefing, suggesting technical assistance from Russia and the possibility of Russia providing advanced technologies in exchange for North Korean munitions. The NIS reported over 10 shipments of munitions sent to Russia, including 1 million artillery rounds, potentially aiding Russia's war in Ukraine. The NIS also indicated that North Korea is exploring ways to support the Palestinians amid the Israel-Hamas conflict. The Air Force of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported a threat of Russian forces using ballistic missiles and Shahid drones in multiple regions of Ukraine on October 31st. The threat included the launch of Shahid assault UAVs from Belgorod Oblast in Russia and southern Ukraine, particularly in Mykolaiv, Kirovorod, Poltava, and Kharkiv Oblasts. The Air Force reported the movement of Russian drones in various directions, with groups detected in Khmelnytsky, Kirovorod, and Poltava Oblasts. 
Air raid warnings were declared in most oblasts, with the all clear given after 3 o'clock. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky asserted that Ukraine's attacks on the Russian Navy in the Black Sea have significantly hampered Moscow's war efforts. Zelensky emphasized the importance of securing the Black Sea, a crucial theater in the conflict, stating that enhanced security would diminish Russia's ability to dominate the region and extend its influence. Despite ongoing criticism of the slow progress on the eastern and southern fronts, Zelensky urged persistence and highlighted the success in reducing Moscow's military strength in the Black Sea. The war, now in its 20th month, shows no signs of imminent resolution. Taiwan reported that China deployed 43 military aircraft and seven ships near the self-ruled island in a 24-hour period up to 6 a.m. Wednesday. Among the aircraft, 37 crossed the median line in the Taiwan Strait, which China no longer recognizes as a boundary. Taiwan responded with standard measures, including scrambling jet fighters, dispatching ships, and activating land-based missile systems. China's frequent and aggressive military maneuvers, intensified since U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan in August 2022, aimed to undermine Taiwanese morale and test its defense capabilities. The status of de facto independence remains popular in Taiwan despite China's coercive tactics. At a defense forum in Beijing, China's General Zhang Yoxia reiterated threats against Taiwan's independence, emphasizing China's resolve to prevent any separation. The forum aimed to project regional leadership and enhance military cooperation amid ongoing frictions with the US, Japan, Southeast Asian neighbors, and India. The US participated in the forum, signaling a potential resumption of military dialogue with China. Taiwan is investigating suspected bribes related to Foxconn founder Terry Goh's presidential campaign. Thirteen individuals were questioned about alleged cash payments exchanged for signatures supporting Goh's candidacy. Goh's campaign distanced itself from the suspects and emphasized that signature drives should not involve monetary exchanges. Goh submitted signatures to the Taipei City Election Commission, surpassing the 290,000 required to secure his independent candidacy. The Central Election Commission will announce by November 14 whether Goh has enough valid signatures. The investigation adds to challenges facing Goh's campaign, including a Chinese probe into Foxconn and efforts by rival candidates to form alliances against him. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is scheduled to visit South Korea on November 8-9 to discuss issues related to North Korea and alliance matters with South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin. The discussions are expected to cover economic security, cooperation on industrial technology, and regional issues of mutual interest. This visit is the first by a U.S. Secretary of State in two and a half years and occurs amid heightened security cooperation between the two allies, with growing concerns about North Korea's military cooperation with Russia. The U.S., South Korea, and Japan recently condemned North Korea's supply of arms and military equipment to Russia, presenting evidence of such shipments. The visit also follows North Korea's demand for an explanation regarding trilateral military drills by the U.S., South Korea, and Japan, expressing concerns about regional security threats. North Korea has intensified the development of tactical weapons and longer-range ballistic missiles, posing a threat to South Korea. South Korea, a major arms exporter, has resisted direct involvement in arming Ukraine due to potential repercussions on its business interests in Russia. A presumed Russian helicopter violated Japanese territorial airspace over the northernmost island of Hokkaido, prompting Japan's air self-defense force to scramble fighter jets in response. Japan lodged a stern protest with Moscow through diplomatic channels over the incident. Tensions between Japan and Russia have been complicated by historical competition in territorial disputes, including the Kuril Islands. The violation comes amid strained relations following Russia's withdrawal from negotiations about the island status after Japan imposed sanctions in response to the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Japan has supported Ukraine with aid, including military equipment and medical assistance, totaling over $7.5 billion.